I haven't done a video like this before, but if you're interested in this scaling or XP based focus video, let me know by liking this video and subscribing to keep up with future major milestones. I might do more of these if major milestones are hit, such as two build experience. Anyways, I accidentally hit one bill XP on Mr. Iron Bar right before 2021, so it's been a bit ago, as documented by Crystal Math Labs here. And ever since then, I've gained another 200 mil EXP, which means I'm currently at 1.2 bill XP. I will recap up to the current EXP of 1.2 bill. So I never found a good time to make a video like this, but I think this is a good time to do it. So have you ever wondered how in the heck did I manage to get this much XP on the account? What kind of stupid grants did I do across all my skills throughout the years? Well, luckily I've documented pretty much every major grind on this account on my place, by the way, you can check that out on the place section or this link will show up at the top right now. So I will go through every single skill and recap what major events happened throughout the iron bar journey. So that way you can see where all major XP progress happened so for combat skills, I'll get that out of the way really quick. I'll most likely bundle that together since it's just a combination of Slayer, Boss, and AFK training. So I won't break them down completely separately. But for non-combat skills, I will recap them separately since I think that is by far the most interesting. You will see some of the old methods that used to be popular or methods or grinds that came out that drastically changed the rates for me on certain skills. So at a quick glance, we're ranked 145 in XP in the Ironman section of the high scores. Damn! And my combat experience is actually over half my total experience at around 800 mil experience, give or take. So it really goes to show how PVM focused this account is. If you want to see all of my major PVM accomplishments, check the description for our progress sheet so you can see everything fast. This means about 400 mil EXP is on non-combat skills. My highest XP on non-combat is actually cooking and farming at 41 mil. And my lowest is fire making at 14 mil. You could say fire making is the most useless skill. So let's quickly talk about the bulk of the XP, which is the combat skills 62 mil attack, 58 mil defense, 190 mil strength, 193 mil hit points, 198 mil range, 71 mil magic. So we got three skills that will hit 200 mil pretty soon. So at first glance, you can see that magic is the most underused combat style overall at 71 mil. Range being my highest XP in a skill may look like it's the most used, but in reality, it's probably melee. Because strength XP alone is close to range, but I also had to train more melee to get 62 mil attack and 58 mil defense. So melee is my most used combat style. Range is my second most utilized style. The reason why melee is the most used is because it's usually the most flexible, it's the fastest to kill most mobs, and the cheapest style for AFKing many mobs, uh, slayer creatures, and bossing. It doesn't require ammo cost too, unlike range and melee either, which saves me a lot of time having to prep them or gather money for them. I typically use melee if range or mage isn't necessary in most situations due to those reasons. Range is heavily used because things like blowpipe and t-bow are just so powerful for many bosses like Chambers, at a variety of bosses there, and Zora, and so many more. I don't want to focus too much on combat, like I said, so we'll leave it there. The only maging I really do is occasional Barrage Slayer tasks and few bosses like Kraken, where it's mage only. Even like the random things I, I gotta use magic for, like, I don't know, just cast like Fertile Sword or something, it's so insignificant XP. Magic is often just a side style too, or a support style I have to use for bosses like Raids 1 for like Old Mage Hand and Nightmare where I have to like charge the pillars. So you don't get too much XP off of bossing either. I'd say that's about it for the combat XP skills. If you guys want a more detailed combat XP breakdown, such as where I AFK'd, how I AFK'd, or which bosses gave me the most XP, I can make a separate combat XP video for that. So let me know in the comments. I think the non-combat skills though is way more interesting so I want to focus a lot more of my time on those skills in this video. I will break down the non-combat skills in order of highest XP then lowest XP. Men's hair is a pivotal part of our look and confidence. However, hair loss is a very common phenomenon that happens to most male adults by the age of 35. As a male in my 20s, it is apparent that my hair has thinned a lot over the years. But what if it is possible to keep our hair? 
Luckily, hair loss prevention exists and Keeps is the premier hair prevention service. The Keeps subscription service connects you with a certified doctor who will tailor and send the right prescriptions every three months to your doorstep. You also have 24 seven access to your Keeps doctor to address any questions and concerns for a high quality service. Check out some of these testimonials from Keeps customers after using Keeps service for four to six months. The Rice Fields, in collaboration with Keeps, is offering a 50% discount on your first order. Keep your lifestyle by keeping your hair. Now, by clicking on my link, that is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash rice cup in the description. Let's start with Slayer. Slayer is a hybrid skill, so I want to recap this to start off. As it's a 51 mil experience, Generally speaking, in the early days, I often try to train as much of my combat as possible through Slayer and unlocking the Slayer bosses to further my account's goal and gear. I managed to max out my melee's range of magic right before 99 Slayer. Shortly after I got 99 Slayer, Jagus introduced the superior creatures and the catacombs, which really skyrocketed Slayer XP because prior to these updates, there was really no bursting of barrage methods and the superiors just give a lot of XP. That means no multi-dust devils, no multi necrals, and so on. Superior update released the Imbue Heart as well, which was a best assault item that boosted your magic to this day. So I decided to camp for the Imbue Heart and it took me from 99 Slayer all the way to 23 million Slayer XP. After the Imbue Heart grind and pretty much getting all the typical Slayer boss drops up to Hydra, I further utilized Slayer to work on pet hunting and hunting rare items like Draft Fohelm, to this day, I still utilize Slayer for those exact goals, but now it's been expanded to collection lock slots. Next is cooking and fishing. Cooking, let's start with that, has changed quite a lot since I first started Iron Man. My primary food that I used was monkfish and sometimes anglers. I fished a ton of monkfish for non-bossing situations and it was a great way to AFK and anglers were mainly for bossing. You might ask, why not Karambuans? So Karambuans were not a viable method until they changed it so that you could stock up on a ton of the bait, which made fishing them in bulk possible. As soon as that change happened, everybody switched over to Karambuans as it was way faster to get, similar XP per hour, and also healed more. And Karambuans are weird because they have a shorter cooldown than most food, so rip the golden age of monk fishing at that point. I started fishing even more because when I started the corp grind, I realized that I needed a lot of food. Corp back in the day, you could not AFK it. You had to use a ton of food just to get a kill. BGS was not that good back then. It just took too long to lower stats to zero. So as a result, I fished so much more until around 2019. But my fishing slowed down a lot since then. I don't use hard food as much anymore. So fishing is super correlated to my cooking, so there's really not too much to talk about it as a separate skill. So farming was honestly a byproduct of the necessity to make potions to do various types of bossing and PVM. Whether it be prayer pots, restores, brews, super combats, range pots, you name it. So initially, I just farmed all the seeds I got from Slayer and bossing. Once I reached Solar though, it was basically 99 farming guaranteed because she dropped so many good tree seeds in crazy amounts. So for a long time, farming was strictly for bossing, but at some point I decided to go for the farming pet as well. The farming guild came out and made farming even easier because it also gave a ton of good seeds via contracts. So I would plant tree seeds post 99 and other special seeds every so often for the chance at the pet. Because of that, my farming XP rose sharply until around 2021 when I finally got the pets. Now, I just farm exclusively to make potions for PVM, so the XP gain is pretty small since it's honestly only herbs and litwort seeds. Woodcutting initially was my go-to AFK skill for easy levels and just fulfilling the usual quests, diaries, and clues. I mainly AFK to 99 just because it was something low effort to do while I did schoolwork and watch shows and edit videos. During this period, I mainly chop, use, and sometimes magic trees. These were pretty good for AFK fletching levels and a bit of cash as well. But woodcutting became quite important when I decided to go for 99 construction. I chopped enough teak logs to get the remaining XP for 99 construction. The concave became extremely important around this time because of the rejuvenation pool updates, making it super worth getting. 
After that endeavor, I would occasionally park myself at Red Roots throughout the years when I just needed to AFK while I did other things, and mostly for the passive pet chance, which I haven't gotten yet. Oh boy, this skill is quite the interesting recap. So initially, I only trained runecrafting for the usual stuff. So my first big endeavor was going for 77 runecrafting for the diary perks like Freemic Elites. So I did lava runecrafting to 77 because there was no ZMI or Guardians of the Rift out yet. At some point, Blood Altar in Zaya came out and I finished AFKing most of the easy skills to 99. So runecrafting was one of the last things left. I could gain levels while AFK. So I just AFK Bloods to 99 and it was worth it because the Nightmare Boss came out at some point and the Bloods from 99 runecrafting wasn't even enough for that grind, but at least it helped jumpstart it. Nightmare kept my need to Blood Runecraft for a long time. I still use Blood Runes quite a bit for PVM, whether it's Ancient Magic, Sangstaff, or Scythe, uh, Thralls, you name it. Recently, Guardians of the Rift came out, which gave me the Runecrafting outfit, which gives 60% more runes whenever you craft them. So with that, I don't have to craft Blood Runes nearly as much anymore, so slow down a lot now. Herblore is heavily correlated with how much PVM I do. Certain years where I did a lot of heavy bossing, the graph went up sharper. However, the sharpest is definitely when I decided to go for maxing. A lot of my herbs came from farming seeds, but also from bossing, mostly from raids 1 and theater blood. Doing 2000 soul raids for all the normal raids equips funded most of the herbs for the rest of the XP to 99. I stocked up a ton of potions for maxing, but all of those potions have long since been used up. I still to this day have to make a ton of potions for PVM. Most recently, Next Grind has forced me to make potions like crazy. Probably the craziest I've ever done since maxing. Chambers and Theater are probably the next worst. And uh, Race 3, who knows, might consume potions like crazy. And my herb XP might go up. Agility for the most part was just necessary for standard grinds. My earliest major endeavor was going for 70 agility for the Mortania Diaries for Barrels. And 70 agility for Zora Shortcut. Other than that, I didn't do much agility until Chambers came out and Soul Rating became the meta strategy for getting the drops. I used a ton of stamina potions during the 2000 Soul Raids, and it eventually got me all the way to 90 agility. Afterwards, my next major endeavor was the Max Cave. I didn't stop there because Sepulchre came out and the release of the Endurance Ring, the best in slot run preservation ring. It took me from 13 mil XP to the top of the graph to get it. For mining in the early stages, I did a lot of AFK mining at Motherload, just like woodcutting because it was easy and free while I was busy with school and IRL stuff. I didn't utilize mining for PVM until Zora happened because I had to level up my smithing to make darts for the blowpipe and Motherload provided the ores for the start. Early on, the mithril and adamant ore and coal became very useful for Motherload. Blowpipe before the nerf was so strong it made mining such a useful skill. Once I felt I was sorted on darts for blowpipe, I decided to spend 92 to 99 mining at Amethyst because it was ultra AFK while I was in school, and also Amethyst was the best arrows I could get in bulk. I basically stocked up on a lifetime of arrows for the Twisted Bow, and I still have leftover Amethyst ores for future arrows or darts if I need them for my blowpipe. The rest of the mining XP came as a result of making so many blood runes at the Sayer Blood Altar as it gives a little bit of mining. Crafting recap has got to be one of the best recaps ever because you'll notice that I really didn't bother training crafting until way later. The reason was because back in the days, the best way to do crafting on Iron Man was buying supplies through charter ships instead of using giant seaweed. It was incredibly competitive and stocks would always deplete, which made it super annoying to collect. So I said, screw it, I'm going to use a power amulet until probably 110 combat. I swear I did Zora with a power amulet. But to be honest with you, the stats between that and a glory is negligible. I even tried making air battle staffs, but that was also terribly slow. Eventually, I snailed my way to 80 crafting to boost for fury, and I stopped there for a while. I didn't bother doing much until I started working on raids 1. I used the spin flag spell and spun 100k flags into bow strings I got from Zora, which got me enough levels to make all the Zenites with boosts. Once I started doing a ton of raids, I realized that I had a ton of gold ore and a ton of gems, mostly from raids and some other bosses, that it should be enough to get 99 crafting. The crafting cave is just way too good, as it was the best teleport to the nearest bank possible, so it was uh, really worth getting. The rest of the crafting XP just came from making a lot of blood runes. 
Fletching didn't become uniquely important outside of the usual questing diaries clues until the blowpipe happened. I had to lobo for adamant darts as it was sustainable and strong at the time and Zoro just gave a bunch of addy bars anyways. My main training method was just mostly AFK fletching the U logs and magic logs I got from the AFK woodcutting that I mentioned earlier and also from Zoro before they nerfed it even more. I resumed fletching training as mentioned before when I mined a bunch of amethyst to make those amethyst arrows for the T-bow. The rest of the XP came from passively making bolts and other ammo as needed for further PVM. For example, recently I made a bunch of dragon bolts for next. So smithing was super similar to fletching recap wise at the start because I didn't focus on it much until blowpipe because I needed the smithing level to make the darts. I stopped smithing for a bit once I reached the level for rune darts and making a ton. But afterwards though, I worked a ton on smithing once again when I went for maxing. I mostly used the gold ore from race 1 to get the rest of the way to 99. Post 99 however, I made a ton of cannonballs when Jagex decided to add a real fighter step in Prifthinus for the master clues. The only step I couldn't perform at the time. I got extremely unlucky and I took rank 1 dry streak for the Brio fighter drop at over 600 KC. It took me over 90,000 moss giants to acquire enough keys to kill the boss that many times. The cannonball cost was around 300,000 so I had to make some of my own. The ones from like corp just wasn't enough. Prayer, the earliest significant recap was of course going for 70 for the Piety and Mauritania Diaries. I did Green Giants for the Bones and used Ectofunctus because the Wildy Altar wasn't a thing yet. After I gained a bunch of levels passively while killing mobs over a long period of time, most notably I buried close to 10,000 Wyvern Bones when I AFK them for my first ever Fissage. I started training Prayer seriously again in my late 80s when I decided to go for Max. At this point, I stocked up on so many bones, superior bones, diagonal bones, D bones, that 99 prayer was a breeze, especially because the Wadi altar existed. The rest of the XP has been passively been bearing bones with the Bone Crusher necklace. Thieving was probably one of the least important skills by far. It was mostly trained as a last resort for the usual stuff. I did most of the early thieving training at Pyramid Plunder because it was either that or blackjacking. I chose Plunder mainly because it was more fun and the Pharaoh Scepter became increasingly more useful for the Spellbook Altar at the house and clue requirements. Post Diaries, I switched to one-clicking Arty Knights when it became a thing for the maxing grind. It was ridiculously easy. I would spam click with one hand and read a book for a class on the other hand. No joke. The rest of the XP mostly came from, I believe, Sepulchre and Thieving for some blood shards. Outside of the usual quest diaries and clues, I didn't really focus much on Hunter until I decided to focus on God Wars. It took me over 1,400 Armadale kills to get the last drop I needed to complete off God Wars, which was the Armadale Hilt, so it took a ton of catching chins to make that happen. Afterwards, I decided to catch red chins when I went for max. Not much has happened with Hunter since. For construction, I've already talked about it a bit when I explained the woodcutting recap. So when the pool came out, I just rushed for it. And my main method of getting to 82 construction was teak planks at April Toll using the Seah Teleport and using the Butler to plank my logs. There wasn't a better method at the time like just banking on Fossil Island. So I basically just made a bunch of teak benches at the Superior Garden. I had some mahogany planks from Raids 1 as well, so I turned those into tables for XP. At some point, I realized I had enough alkables to garner enough GP to get 99 construction, such as all the onyx bolts from Corp. The construction cape was unlimited house teleports, and the house was so good at the time, so the cape was super useful. Most recently, I did a little bit of mahogany homes to get the wieldable saw, but I'll probably be back in the future for some collection lock stuff. And last but not least, we have fire making, the most useless skill ever. I am not kidding you, this skill has only been useful for the usual quest diaries and clues and maxing, but that's just also every skill. I've had no profound unique reasons to gain XP on this skill in all these years of playing on this account. Most of my FM XP is through, you guessed it, Winter Todd, oh my god. When I decided to go for the max cape, I changed it up a little bit because I exclusively solo Winter Todd it for fun and for better drops. I got a Deaxe and Tomer Fire from it, so that was kind of cool. And yeah, that's it. 
So that's the entire 1.2 build XP breakdown. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. This video technically took years to make. <laughs> if you enjoyed and liked this kind of analysis video, give it a like and subscribe. I would highly appreciate that. The next Iron Bar Prize video is going to get heated as the ice finally starts to defrost.